Well, hello, Successfully You Nation, Facebook family, wherever you are, all over this world. Greetings from the Kingdom Embassy here in Arlington, Texas. And I uh, hope you've been prepared for our time together and tonight in the word, our study, amen, that we are on this Successful You journey together. And uh, so go ahead and come on in, come on in here. Let somebody know that, hey, on tonight, our nightly Success for You seminar. Listen, get ready, get ready, get ready. Uh, we've got some new things coming. Next month in August, we will we'll be launching our Successfully You, Successfully Us relationship session. Relationship session. We'll be talking about relationship, mainly answering questions, Q&A. So go ahead and uh, prepare. Uh, email us. In advance, qu any question that you may have concerning relationship, yours, your mamas, your daddies, your neighbors, your enemies, or anybody, co-workers, any question that you may have regarding relationship, amen, that we believe that the word of God, the spirit of God has an answer for every question, every challenge that we have in life and in relationships. And uh, so... Look, look forward to that. That's coming. That's coming. Uh, in, in the month of August, that's coming. Amen. All right. So go ahead and uh, share, like, subscribe, and uh, and let somebody know that, hey, Mr. Successful You is on tonight, and it is Successful You hour and time. Amen. For us to get into this word and uh, uh, continue on this journey uh, of discovering our original uniqueness and learning how to live thereby. All right, I'm going to share my screen. We're going to get right on into it. And uh, and we're going to do our Successful You Confession, where we speak over and into our lives prophetically based upon the truth of the Word of God and uh, in this uh, positive format. And uh, so uh, that's what this is all about. So if, you, if you're wondering, uh, if you join us for the first time and wonder why we do this, get your mind together, get the atmosphere and uh, set the weather conditions for growth tonight. Amen. Think about that. Your, your, your daily confessions and, and affirmations and, and, and uh, words that you say, uh, positive word, it sets the weather for your growth. And, uh, and that's what we're doing tonight. So let's do this together. Uh, I am highly treasured and favored of God. I have a healthy respect for myself. I am a spirit being possessing a mind and living in a healthy human body. I am blessed with the seed of greatness, yes, in me, and God's character and ability lives within me, causing me to excel in every area of my life through the power of love and forgiveness. I am freed from all emotional hurt, fantasies, fear, and strife which will no longer rob me of my happiness and forward progress in life. Therefore, excuse me, I take full responsibility for who I am and what I shall become. Upon the principles and wisdom of life will I delight and meditate day and night. My thought life is being renewed and my true purpose for living has been and is being revealed. So on this day and forevermore, I declare that I am whole, I am fulfilled, I am happy. Come on, say it with me. I am successful to me. Amen. I believe that you can be successful to you. I believe that I can be successful who God created me to be. Amen. You've got to lock in on that first. You've got to believe that. You've got to be able to hold those thoughts every day, all day long. Until it happens, until the manifestation of it shows up in your life. Amen. Everything you do, you got to do it believing that. Otherwise, you're just slinging it and hoping for the best. But I don't know about you. I'm tired of hoping for the best. It's time to make the best happen in your life. So tonight we continue talking about the insects of life. 
the insects of life. And tonight we're on number six. This is our third lesson on number six, the temperament. Yeah, we're talking about your temperament. And uh, I'm gonna leave them there just for three seconds so you can write them down. If you haven't had a chance to write them down, write down each one. Now the ones we dealt with, the I-N-S-E-C, we've already dealt with those. Go back and listen to the replay and you'll be able to get the information concerning those five insects. But we're, we're heading to the, to the finish line on this particular part of the lesson. And uh, so we're talking about insect number six. And remember the insects are symbolic uh, representation of our emotions. Like insects, so does our emotions impact our lives. Like insects impact the farm and, and, and fruits and vegetables and things that, that needs to grow in life are impacted by insects. And, uh, and so it is in our lives, emotions. And listen, the Holy Spirit said to me, uh, so, so, so profoundly, uh, Joel chapter, uh, two, uh, this, this is, this is just me giving an exhortation. And, uh, I, I want to, uh, remind you by reading in Joel chapter two, what the word of the Lord says about the insects in your life, my life, amen, that have, that have made havoc in our lives, uh, for years and years, ate away at our growth and and development. And uh, so as soon as I get it pulled up right here, uh, Joel chapter two, Joel, the book of Joel chapter two, the prophet spoke to the people and said, listen, God wants to restore the years that you've lost. Yes. And I bring that to you tonight. The Spirit of God is saying to us, he wants to restore the years that the insects have eaten away. You don't have to go back and live it over. Watch this. The Lord is talking to, to Israel, and he says to them, uh, in verse number um, um, let's see here. Verse number 25, for time's sake, we'll just do that. He says, and I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar and the pomeroy, my great army, which I sent among you, and you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God that have dealt wonderfully with you and my people shall never be ashamed. And you shall know that I am the, I am in the midst of Israel and that I am the Lord your God and none else and my people shall never be put to shame. Listen, God said, look at verse number 20, uh, 23. He said, be glad then you children of Zion and rejoice. Or well, actually look at verse number 22. Be not afraid, you beasts of the fields, for the pastures of the wilderness do spring. For the tree beareth her fruit, the fig tree and the vine do yield her strength, their strength. Be glad then, you children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God. For he hath given you the former rain moderately, moderately, and he will cause to, to come down for you the rain, the former rain and the latter rain in the first month and the floor shall be full of wheat and the vats shall overflow with vine and oil and I will restore to you the years that the insects have eaten. That's the point. Listen, that means these insects, these emotions that we're talking about, they affect years of your life, not just days. Wow. You got to understand that. And God said, I am going to restore years of your life. Receive that tonight. The spirit of God is speaking to you, speaking to me. He said, as we obey him, as we hear this word tonight and apply it to our lives, be encouraged. Yes, he's going to show you the, the ugly, but here's the good. 
that he's going to show you the ugly so you can deal with it and confront it because he wants to establish some things in your life and restore the years that you've lost in productivity. In every area of your life where your emotions have robbed you, and more specifically, the emotion of anger have gotten the best of you multiple times and made you angry and bitter and all this kind of stuff. God said, if you deal with it tonight, if you'll bring that thing under control tonight, if you'll embrace the truth that is being shared with you tonight, he promised, and he sent me as a prophet to tell you that he's going to restore you tonight. He's going to restore your marriage. He's going to restore your money. going to restore your ministry. He's going to restore your life, restore your health, restore your career, restore your family. Because that, 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 that insect of emotions have torn your life apart. But tonight, restoration is in the atmosphere. Restoration is in the house. You got to receive it. So receive what I'm going to share with you tonight. By faith and the spirit of God will begin to manifest himself in your life and restore the years. So say with me, I'm ready. Father, I'm ready for years of my life to be restored. Oh, my God. Listen, the, the, listen, the, 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 the old is about to be young again. Yeah, I know you're 55, 75, 65, whatever. You, how many ever years you've lost? God said, if you if you trust him, if you're turning back to him in regards to the truth and accept this truth, as difficult as it may be, he'll begin the process and put you on a journey of restoration of years. Can you imagine? Oh, I, I hear the Holy Spirit saying, listen, I'm trying to give you back pay. Oh, my God. <laughs> Y'all better hear that. You better hear it. God said, if you receive this teaching, back pay, financial back pay is coming your way. Health back pay is coming your way. Joy back pay is coming your way. Peace back pay is coming your way. Happiness back pay is coming. See, things that you were owed, that you lost because you allowed the insects in your life and you didn't know what to do with them and they ate away at your life but you're still here god says you're about to enter a season of back pay in every area of your life when you begin to apply this truth my god my god do you hear that oh i, I hear it in the spirit back pay i'm about to get back pay that which the enemy stole he got to pay it back sevenfold and then watch this, with interest, yes, which means sevenfold is basic payment. So, so some of your back pay is going to be a hundredfold. Some of your back pay is going to be thirtyfold, sixtyfold, fiftyfold, tenfold, whatever. Come on, receive it by faith. This is not hype talk. This is real stuff. He told Israel. I know you struggled for years. God's people struggled for years. He said, but because you turned back to me, I'm about to give you the former and the latter together. I'm about to catch your life up with you. Oh, you hear what I said? God said, I'm about to catch your life up with you. You live past your life, which means you've outlived your productivity. You're not as productive as, as you are old. But God said, I'm about to change that in your life with this understanding of getting your emotions under control. You're going to restore your ministry. You're going to restore the anointing upon your life. You're going to walk in fresh grace, fresh strength, because you've decided to own what you've allowed the insects of your life to rob you of. Like Israel did, he said the, the pumpkin worm, the canker worm, the locusts, all of those insects that eating away at your productivity, causing you to struggle in life. I don't know about you, but I receive that. Things are about to turn in my favor. Yes, 
Why? Because I'm owning up. I'm owning up to my emotions. And taking control and stop excusing myself. Hallelujah. Yes. So, all right, all right. You receive that tonight? Go back to Exodus. Exodus. We were looking at Moses. Moses. In the book of Exodus, uh, uh, the first encounter with Moses regarding this emotion and stuff happened in Exodus chapter 2. Moses killed him, a man. He saw an Egyptian beaten an Israelite. And he became inflamed and enraged with anger. Because Moses had an emotional anger problem. And the Bible says he killed that Egyptian and hid his body in the sand. And then came across another incident where two Israelites were at each other. And Moses intervened. And one of them said to Moses, oh, oh, you going to kill me just like you killed that Egyptian? And Moses knew then he had to leave town. Because the word and got out that he's the one to kill that Egyptian they found buried in that shallow grave. Because <laughs> his motions, the man of God, his motion got the best of him. Hear me, woman of God, man of God, ministry overseer, leaders, whatever your position is, brothers, sisters, human beings, hear me tonight that our emotions are paramount to our spiritual journey of how rocky it would be or, and, or how productive and rewarding it would be. You got to understand this. You cannot downplay your emotions and particularly anger. And so Moses, uh, at, at the age of, in his 40s, committed murder. And he ran off and God put him on the backside of the mountain for 40 years. And at the age of 80, God gave him an assignment to lead the people out of Egypt. And he and Aaron went down to lead the people out and saw many signs and wonders and saw the power of God displayed in mighty ways. Part in the Red Sea and walking across the Red Sea and watching the Egyptians get swallowed up, you know, uh, by trying to do the same. And they got out into the desert and the people were thirsty and, and hungry, whatever, and he cried out for water. And God spoke to Moses and said, Moses, strike this rock. Strike this rock. And you'll find that in, 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 in uh, uh, what was that at? I believe. Yeah. Anyway, I forget which chapter it is. You know what I'm talking about. Told Moses, strike the rock. And he, he obeyed God and struck the rock, and water came out. And later on in, 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 in um, uh, where we at? In, I don't know how I lost my place. I had, I had it all laid out here. Yeah. Do, 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 do. And then in chapter 17 of Exodus, a second time, the people needed water. And God told Moses this time, speak to the rock. He said, speak to the rock and water will come forth. But Moses was so emotionally charged and so emotionally uh, overwhelmed with the attitude, the negative attitude and behavior of the people of God. He was so bothered by their lack of faith and their lack of learning and development. He got so emotional. He was responding to the people and incorrectly responded to God. Let's be very careful. You've got to understand, you cannot allow your emotions to get so attached to people's behavior where they get you out of sorts and especially with God. 
And so God told him this second time to speak to the rock. But instead of him speaking to the rock, what did he do? Because he was so emotionally charged, out of anger, he struck the rock. And God said, that's it. That's it. He said, Moses, this is the straw that breaks the camel's back. I've been dealing with you. I've been helping you, putting up with your emotional outrage and outbursts and, 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 and watch you do things and, and, and whatnot. And I still used you. I, but this, this is the last straw, Moses. God says, this generation that you're leading and you yourself, Moses, will not enter the promised land because God told Moses, because you and Aaron rebelled against me. Wow. Now, how is how is that Aaron? Aaron didn't strike the rock. Aaron, didn't, but see, Aaron was Moses' sidekick. Aaron was Moses' helper, and Aaron could have prevented that. And so God held. Listen, Aaron was following Moses, so he followed Moses' suit. That's why I tell you. And watch this. And because Moses was leading Aaron. Aaron's life was affected by Moses' emotional instability. Moses' inability to control his emotions caused him his life and Aaron's life of not going into the promised land. That's why you're going to be careful, the leader that you're under, that you submit to, that you follow. See, you got to understand that. That's why I said last night, I would not follow a leader who do not have their emotional life under control, who are not self-controlled, self-disciplined emotionally. They respond to everything's going around in the world and not to the word of God. I can't follow you. Think about it. This is why some of our children end up emotional basket case because their parents were emotionally unstable, and that affects those under your authority. And so God says to, to watch this, in Exodus 17, he says to Moses and Aaron, he says, verse number six, behold, I will stand before you upon the rock in Horeb, and you shall smite the rock, and there shall come water out of it that the people may drink, and Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. And he called the name of that place Massa. See, and, and see, th this is where yeah, yeah, this, this, this is where God told him to strike the rock, and he did so and obeyed. And then the second time God told him he struck the rock Instead of speaking to the rock, like God told him. And God told him, listen, you nor this people, nor Aaron, shall go forth. See, you shall not go forth into the promised land. Why? Because you didn't do what I told you to do. You struck the rock when I told you to speak to the rock. And God called it rebellion. He said, you have rebelled against me. Yeah, I was just trying to, trying to, uh, let's see here. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, I'm looking at some here right quick. Let me see if this is what I'm looking for. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Yeah, in Numbers, Numbers chapter 20, when God spoke to, uh, or Moses rather, and told him to speak to the rock, and he, he struck the rock, unlike he, like he did in Exodus chapter 17. But God said, speak to it this time. 
Verse number 12, and the Lord God said to Moses and Aaron, because you did not believe in and rely on me and cling to me to sanctify me in the eyes of the Israelites, you therefore shall not bring this congregation into the land which I have given them. See, why? Because God said, when you disobeyed me because your emotional response caused you to disobey God, God said that was rebellion. So listen to me very careful. This is why you have to get your, your temper under control. Moses had a temper, and God gave him 40 years to deal with it. And watch this. 40 years to deal with it, and he still didn't get it under control. Now he's going to spend the next 40 years wandering around in the desert, all because of his uncontrolled emotions. So I want to ask you the question. Is it possible that what you've been going around in circles in is related to your emotion not being under control in that area of your life? See, we got to be honest with ourselves. There's always a reason. You know, we say, I don't know why this ain't why. I don't know why. Always check your behavior, particularly your emotions, in an area where you don't see the will of God manifesting itself and it's been sufficient amount of time. Now, I don't know what that is. It's different in every situation, but I just use that term. You know what it is because there is a due season. And if the due season has come and the fruits are not manifesting when they're due, that means something has ate away at the tree that's preventing it from producing its fruit. And usually it's weeds that's choked it or insects that's eating away at the tree roots causing it to not have enough life to produce fruit. That's always the case in our lives. Either we've got weeds in our lives that choke in the life of our tree or insects that are eating away at the roots of our tree and our, and our life do not have enough life to bring forth fruit. That's why this is so very important. And so he told them, Verse 24 in Numbers chapter 20, and Aaron shall be gathered unto the peop his people, for he shall not enter to the land which I have given unto the children of Israel, because you rebelled against my word at the water of Meribah. I told you to speak to the rock at Meribah, but you, you struck the rock. I told you to strike the rock at, 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 at uh, Manasseh or Massa, whatever it was. But at this one, I told you to speak to it. But because you was emotionally out of order, it caused you to rebel against God's instruction. See, we, we, we got to understand the value of this. Let me read some, some other scriptures to you real quick. Turn with me to uh, 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 Proverbs chapter 14. Proverbs chapter 14. We'll start there, Proverbs chapter 14. Because we got to understand that you can't be moody and overheated all the time and expect the Spirit of God to manifest in your life and expect your life to grow and to be productive where you ought to be when you don't have your emotions under control. Get your temper under control. Remember, check your temperature. Are you cold, lukewarm, or overheated? Those are three for sure that'll cause you to be unproductive. Being emotionally cold, emotionally lukewarm, and emotionally overheated. God wants you warm and hot, not overheated. What you mean you should be you should warm means you should be welcoming and hot means you should be have passion for the things of God. So healthy emotions is when you are warm and hot. See, God don't have no problem with us get angry. It's how we get angry and why we get angry at the least of things. Getting angry is a godly trait. God gets angry. See, 
Righteous indignation. Proverbs chapter 14. Look at it. Verse 29 and 30. It says, He that is slow to wrath, that word wrath means got a temper, hot headed, got a temper. He that is slow to having a hot temper is of great understanding. Wow. But he that is hasty of spirit exalts folly. Let me read you the Amplified Version. It says, he who is slow to anger has great understanding. See, that's the key to getting your, your, your emotion under control. Understand. Then the Bible said, with all thy getting, getting understanding. I'm, that's what I'm doing in this teaching. Giving you an understanding of the power and the value and the importance of your emotions. When you understand this, it will empower you to get your emotions under control. Get your attitude under control. And you'll stop being moody. Moody people are people that go from cold to hot. Or from hot to cold. That's moody. Are you an individual? The way the people around you, they got a tiptoe because they don't know what kind of mood you're in. Today. That means you've established an ungodly reputation emotionally. That you got people around you, your children, your spouse, your friends, your co-workers. Your members, your, all the leaders say, man, don't, don't say that to brother so-and-so, sister so-and-so, because they'll go off on you. That's an indictment. That's a shame. And you wonder why your prayer is not working. You wonder why you're giving them tithe and offering ain't working. You got a bad attitude wrapped around your giving. See? You got to stop excusing yourself and check yourself and make yourself accountable to somebody who can help check you as well. See, and, and, and listen, all that insecurity and low esteem you got that's causing that anger and frustration, that's on you. That's your fault. That's usually where a bad temper comes from is that people who live with low self-esteem for a long period of time, they get angry at it. People that, are, that have been bitter, become bitter, have allowed hurt to linger and turn into bitter, you got a temper. See, all this emotional stuff, the Bible calls these secret sins, iniquity. I read it to you last night in, 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 in Psalm chapter 32. David said, when I kept silent, about my iniquity, my, my emotions, my negative emotions, when I kept silent, they ate away at me and caused health problems in my body. I'm gonna say it again. If you receive this truth and get that attitude under, under control, your health conditions will get better physically and literally. You'll start sleeping better. Everything in life will start getting better. If you own up to the fact that you, 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 you have not done well in managing your emotions when things have happened, you think you got a right to say and do what you want because you have an emotion because somebody did something. No, 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 no. Nothing justifies that. It speaks to our immaturity is what it does. And like I said last night, you know, I've seen bishops and pastors and overseers treat their people like they're dogs, like they're slaves, because they messed up. They didn't do something right. Preacher, get that anger under control. <clears throat> Watch this. Proverbs 14, verse 29 and 30 says, he who is slow to anger has great understanding. I can watch your emotional response and I can tell what you understand and what you don't. And watch this. But he who is hasty of spirit exposes and exalts his folly. 
In other words, your emotional outburst really reveals the foolishness that's in you. You bring attention to foolishness. You exalt foolishness. Wow. Meaning, when you have uncontrollable emotional outburst of anger at people, you just revealed how much of a fool you really are. Not because you got upset at what they did, but how you got upset. See, remember, get angry, but sin not. So you can get you can get highly upset and still not sin. So the sin is not the anger. The sin is how you react in that moment of anger. Saying things you shouldn't say, doing things you shouldn't do, and you got to go back and repent and regret. You, you got to you got to stop that. It's about I won't do that again. I promise that ain't gonna stop that from happening. You can make all the promises you want to until you get your thought life under control. Because it's the way you think that caused you to have such emotional outbursts. Look at verse number 30. It says, a calm and undisturbed mind and heart are the life and health of the body. But envy, jealousy, and wrath are like rottenness of the bones. There it is. See? Our emotional instability is causing tremendous health problems in our bodies and our minds. This is why you don't see the manifestation of the spirit of God and the truth of God in our lives because the bridge of our mind, which our emotions are preventing the spirit of God from manifest. So remember what I said last night. Your emotions, they either the bridge that's allowing the Holy Spirit to come over to your, your physical life, or your emotions are the barrier. So which is it? Have you allowed your emotions to develop in such a such a way where they become a bearer? A a a a a a, a uh, uh, um. I can't even think of the word. It slipped my mind. But that 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 they become a hindrance to your progress. My goodness. Or do they allow the 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 Holy Spirit to cross over into your physical life? Barrier. That's that's the word I'm trying to think of. Barrier. See, when you, when you when you have uncontrollable emotions, they become a barrier of the power of the Spirit of God in our lives. And I don't know about you, but I can't afford less anointing. I can't afford my anointing to be diminished. I can't afford to not be at full power. That's why each and every once every day we got to get our emotions under control. And one of the most powerful things we've got to stop doing is excusing ourselves and making excuses for our unstable emotions. Watch this. He says, a calm and undisturbed mind and, and, and heart are the life and health of the body. These heated, overheated emotions, such as envy and jealousy and wrath, he said they are rottenness. Wow. Can you imagine when a tree rots? Does it bear fruit? No. Neither does a life that's full of rottenness. What kind of rottenness? Emotional instability. It's like the rottenness of a tree. It rottens your life. It ruins your life. All right. You ain't convinced? Let me give you another. Proverbs 19. Proverbs chapter 19. I want to see this because I want you to understand how important this is. Proverbs chapter 19, verse 19. says, a man of great wrath. That's a man with a temper. 
emotionally overheated, watch this, shall suffer the penalty. I didn't write it. I'm reading it. I'm believing it. And I'm applying it to my life. It said a man of great wrath shall suffer the penalty. Wow. Shall suffer the penalty. A man of great wrath shall suffer penalty. For if you deliver him from the consequences, he will feel free to cause you to do it again. Wow. Meaning this, if a person who have an anger problem, emotionally overheated, emotionally outbursts, whatever, you keep making excuses for them or you keep bailing them out, you're not helping them. Why? Because you gave, you gave them the freedom to do it again. But if you stop bailing out, that emotionally stable husband, wife, or child, preacher, or member, then you force them to be accountable and do something about it. So the first thing you got to show them is this. You will be penalized for your emotional instability and outbursts, uncontrolled anger. You want to put your hands on people. You want to, you want to say things you know you shouldn't say. And then, and then turn around and have the nerve to say, I didn't mean that. Get close to the camera. Let me whisper in your ear. That's a lie. You meant it. It came out of your mouth, which means it was in your heart. See, your mouth do not speak out of the abundance of somebody else's heart. My mouth speaks out of the abundance of my heart, not yours. Your mouth speaks out of the abundance of your heart, not mine. You understand that? See, stop excusing yourself and stop excusing other people. Because I'm going to tell you something, a lot of times when people have emotional outbursts and say stuff, that they shouldn't say, that they didn't want to say, whatever. That's really the truth that's in them. It just took that situation to really go down that deep and get it out and bring it to the surface. But that was in you all along. Where do we think these words come from? What do we think these ugly thoughts and things come from when we say them? We say, I don't know where that came from. Chalk it up to my head and not my heart. Listen to me. They the same. The mind and the heart are the one and the same. Think about it. See, we keep dismissing ourselves. We keep excusing ourselves and we can't get it corrected. Look what it says. I'm going to read it again. Proverbs 19 and 19. A man of great wrath, uncontrolled emotions, shall suffer the penalty. For if you deliver him from the consequences, if you, if you keep them from suffering the consequences of their emotional misbehavior, then you give them license to feel like they can do it again. And then watch this. They don't get better. Stop bailing people out. Stop bailing out your spouse tonight. He didn't mean that. Yeah, he hit me upside the head, but he didn't mean that. He cussed me out, but he didn't really mean that. He called me these names, but he didn't really mean that. She, she said that, but she didn't mean that. Because they, they love me. <laughs> Where do y'all think that stuff come from? It's always been in them. It took your behavior to trigger it. And listen, be very careful. There ain't nothing that you can do to get it out of them. Only they and God together can get that out of them and change their mind. But some of y'all think y'all can change people. You go right ahead. 
Look how well you've done in changing yourself. Got my point? If you're struggling with changing yourself, how in the world you think you're going to change somebody else? If they don't change themselves, they ain't changing. Now, people, people say, you know, pray, pray for them, pray for them. Well, I need you to pray for them. Let, let me tell you, let me, I'm going to pray for you, but let me tell you how I'm going to pray. Because, see, my prayer ain't going to change you. I don't know why y'all think, call the pastor, call the preacher, and he pray for me. You know, I, I just need the pastor to lay hands on me. Let me tell you something, brother. I can lay hands on you, and I can pour every virgin version of oil on your head. But if you don't make up your doggone mind to change, me laying my hands on you, I ain't going to change you. I don't know why we think this thing is magic. But here's how I will pray. I will pray that you have an ear to hear the spirit of God or what you need to do to change your behavior. Tell my, you know, uh, Lord, take this away from me. It doesn't work that way. We just want God to just take stuff from us instead of us putting in the work and getting them out of us. Listen, God don't take stuff out of you. You got to let it go. You got to do things in regards to the word of God and the word of God will cleanse you. The word of God will cleanse you. But that means this, you've got to apply the word to that area. If you don't apply the word, you can pray all you want to. Now, I'm not trying to discourage you from praying. I'm trying to help you to understand how to pray. Don't waste your time. Your prayer should be about, Lord, I'm availing myself for you to show me what I need to do to change the way I think and the way I handle myself emotionally. I need to get a grip on my emotions. Woo, my goodness. Watch this. Proverbs chapter 27. One, got another one. Proverbs chapter 27. I pray that you're getting something out of this. I pray that you're hearing me. I pray that you're hearing the spirit of God. Proverbs 27 verse number four says this. Wrath is cruel. A bad temper is cruel. Is destructive. And anger is outrageous. But who is able to stand before envy? Wow. Envy is, it, 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 is, is just as bad, even worse. Because remember what envy is. Envy is an insect. Envy is when you have low respect of yourself in comparison to others. Envy is when you compare yourself with others. You, you measure yourself by others. Wow. Those are negative emotions. And we just went over that a couple of weeks ago. It's right here in the Word. See, I need you to see these scriptures because the scripture is reminding us that we can't be playing with these negative emotions that we keep living with and we allow to grow and then we excuse ourselves until something really terrible happens let me tell you something. If you don't get it under control, I won't say this by the Holy Ghost because somebody's listening to this now or later. The Spirit of God said, if you don't get your emotions under control, you're going to literally kill somebody or literally kill yourself. I'm saying that by the Spirit of God because that's how serious it is. So you're killing yourself spiritually and mentally, for sure. And you're killing other people spiritually and mentally. That, that anger you got with your spouse is killing them mentally and emotionally and, 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 and spiritually. And you're killing the spiritual atmosphere of your, of your house. That's called murder. And eventually, if you don't get it under control, you or somebody else are going to physically die from your uncontrolled temper, from your moodiness. 
See, some of y'all tell me, I, I, I ain't got no temperature out of control, but you're moody. You know what being moody is? Let me tell you a word that describes moody people. People that are moody. I call them volcanoes. Think about it. See, moody people, they got stuff brewing. And one day you, you meet them, everything looks be okay. The next day, they don't want to talk to you. Why? Because the, the negative emotions that's brewing in their lives changes their mood because they, 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 they're not doing good in handling what they're dealing with internally. And so they shut you down, shut you out, you know, uh, act funny. But then the next day, it seemed like they in they, they doing good because they processing their, their anger better that day. But they're like a volcano. After a while, it's going to erupt. So when you're being moody, you don't fly out the handle yet. But being moody means you're a volcano in the making. But someday it's going to explode. That's why we cannot excuse people being moody, us being moody. That means, you know, I'm not dealing well today. I need to check that. See, that means you're not handling your life challenges well emotionally. That's why you're being moody. You don't want to talk, you don't want to play. Then tomorrow, you, you want to play with everybody. Listen, people don't have time for that. Because watch this, moody people are very unstable. You can't build no house. You can't build no store. You can't build a business on the side of a volcano that's about to erupt. And some of y'all have married a volcano. Some of y'all relationship, you listen, you build a relationship on the side of a volcano and, 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 and you will not, won't listen to nobody. But when it up erupts, oh my God, everybody's gonna know. That's why every day I've got to check myself. I got to manage myself. I got to manage my emotions. When I'm dealing with negative things, positive things, you got to stop getting low and getting too low and too high. Paul, like Paul says, I learned to be content. That's warm. That's predictable. You got to learn to be content. Meaning you're not too high, you're not too low. And when things get too high, you don't get high with it. When things get too low, you don't get low with it. That's called content. Sometimes the money go low. Don't let your emotions go low because the money go low. Sometimes the money is high. Don't let your emotions go high because the money is high. Because that's a danger as well. You want to be content. Predictable. Meaning. People ought to be able to know what you're going to do when you got money and when you don't have money. But some of y'all are so unpredictable. I can tell when you got money when you don't cause you wear everything on your shoulders or your forehead or your back or whatever because you're not processing stuff internally. So you wear it on the outside and everybody can see it. Preachers, non-preachers, people everywhere. So he said, listen, wrath is cruel, meaning it's devastating. It's destructive. It's ugly. It doesn't favor you. Watch this. Cruel also means love to see you in pain. Wow. Remember in Proverbs 19, it says, a man of wrath shall suffer penalty. Wrath, love to see you suffer. Love to see your relationship suffer. 
Get rid of it. Get your temper under control. Get your emotion under control. Watch this. I'm going to read one more scripture to you. James. James chapter 1. James chapter 1. As I prepare to close tonight. James chapter 1. Verse 19 and 20. Watch this. Understand this, my beloved brethren. Let every man be quick to hear a ready listener, slow to speak, slow to take offense and to get angry. Mm. Notice the word slow to speak, slow to take offense, slow to anger, but quick to hear. Why? Verse 20. For man's anger, man's wrath does not promote the righteousness God wishes and requires. Wow. King James Version said, for the wrath, the temper of man worketh not the righteousness of God. And I'm going to leave it right there and I'm going to pick up right there again on Monday. I thought I was going to finish it tonight, but I want you to think about this scripture. And we'll talk more about James chapter 1, verse 19 and 20. How my your emotions is preventing you from producing the will of God in your life, in your family, in your marriage, in your business, in your ministry. Whoever you are, we got to deal with this thing. All right? Listen, thank you for joining me this week. If you've been with me each night this week, thank you. Appreciate you. Bless you. If not, consider joining us each week. This, I want to give you an opportunity. First and foremost, I want to speak to those of you out there who may not know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. So the first opportunity I want to give you tonight is become a part of the family of God because you cannot be successful to you until you discover who you are. And you cannot do that without your maker, your creator, God, as your father. Because that's one of the greatest things that's, that, that happens in your life. You'll find you. Sin is hiding you, destroying you. You say, well, how do I do that? Real simple. You got to believe in your heart. Confess with your mouth. Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, as the Son of God. So pray this prayer with me, Father. I come to you now as a sinner, and I renounce and reject my life as a sinner. I want to be your son. So I receive your son, Jesus Christ, as your son and perfect sacrifice for, for my sin. And I accept the, the full payment that he paid for my sin and to restore me back to my original self. And so I thank you for his death, burial, and resurrection on my behalf. And I receive you. And I ask you to forgive me for rejecting you all these years. And I receive your freedom, your forgiveness. And I receive you into my heart. I receive you into my life. Now receive me as your son and be my father. I believe in you. I trust you. I yield my life to you now in every way. Teach me, guide me of how to live for you. Listen, you prayed that prayer. I want you, welcome you to the family of God. And I want to encourage you to allow us to help you. Amen. Become a partner of this ministry in some way, form, or fashion. Or if you don't, if you can't find a local church where you are, consider being a member of this ministry. You can do that online or abroad. And listen, we'll, we'll, we'll walk this journey with you. I'll pastor you. I'll mentor you. Whatever you need us to be, we'll help you on this journey of being successful you. See our email information on the screen right there? Email us. Let us know how we can help you. And let us know that you gave your life to Christ. The second opportunity that I want to give everybody is the opportunity to become a part of the Successful You Nation. Yes, it's real. It's live. It's going all over the world. 
And that's what we're doing every night. We're building a successful you nation. Then we're going to take this gospel and this truth concerning all the subject matters of how to live as you was created and not as you were born. How to be successful to you. I want to take this to the world. So why don't you help me do that? Amen. We're going to start doing some printing books and booklets, put some things in people's hands, send stuff all across the world. But I need your help to do that. I need partners. So why don't you consider becoming a partner, a monthly partner in prayer and financial support as the spirit of God leads you to do so. Thank those of you who have already done so. Thank you for your, your support. Thank you for partnering with us. And uh, won't you pray about it? Consider an, um, an amount each and every month. Every, everything counts, no matter what it is. Amen. As long as it's your faith and what God told you to do, all is good. So I want to thank you for that. And uh, thank you in advance. And uh, we'll be sending some things to our partners as you partner with us. We'll, we'll do some things for you on a monthly basis. Be a blessing to you as you're blessing to this ministry and helping us to take this gospel of the kingdom across the world into the nations. And uh, so if the word's been a blessing to you this week, so I'll see you tonight. We appreciate you. We bless you. Until we see you again, live as you was created, not as you were born. Because that's the only way you can be successful to you. God bless you. Appreciate y'all. Love you. Have a good week. We'll see you again on Monday. Take care, everybody.